Seeing its 2024 outlook with net sales and adjusted EPS looking better than analysts had projected amid strong demand for sporting goods. Now this comes as the retailer bucks the broader consumer pullback trend. Still, shares not responding too positively here to the beat and raise. So joining us now to discuss, we've got John Kernan, TD Cowan, Managing Director of Retail and Consumer Brands. It's great to speak with you here. So I'm just taking a look at your note, John, and you talk about this idea that we are in a struggling kind of macro backdrop for the industry. What is Dick's doing that is allowing them to buck that trend? They're outperforming peers pretty significantly, both on a sales basis and gross margin basis. Uh, specifically, they're getting better allocations from the top vendors and their store experience far exceeds their competitors. So that's where they're winning on experience, product, and engagement with the consumer. I mean, who didn't love the store experience growing up with Dick's? I mean, you get in there, you run around the track a couple times, you test out the shoes here. What's changing so fundamentally here for a company that you said just won back to school season? Yeah, they were a winner in back to school, uh, for sure. Their same store sales up nearly 5%. Uh, in Q2, we're well above the sporting goods category sales that we saw throughout the quarter uh, based on some industry sources. So they're a big share gainer. In terms of why they're gaining share, the product allocations from key vendors have gotten so much better. The vendors have recognized that the consumer values DIX, they can value the shopping experience in DIX, and management's doing a tremendous job in merchandising and supply chain to flow through very high full price sales. So the store experience has gotten better since, since we were kids. It will continue to. They've got 20 new House of Sports stores opened by the end of this year. And we think that's a that's a incremental growth avenue for them that will generate very high returns. How are some of the brands that uh, weren't necessarily around when we were kids, John, like uh, on, for example, in Deckers with the Hoka shoes? How are they fueling any of the action that we might be seeing in Dick's balance sheet right now? Yeah, it's definitely driving traffic uh, and, and conversion in store, particularly in footwear. And footwear has been a big driver of their same store sales the last, say, year and a half. For instance, in 2023, the footwear category itself drove about two thirds of Dick's total same store sales gains. So On and Hoka are playing a big role in that. Nike, uh, Dick's is one of the few areas they're growing in in, in, in the US. That Nike's Dick's business was up 10% last year, year over year. Uh, so footwear and foot, uh, footwear allocations from key vendors have really improved here. Hoka and On have been big contributors to that. Is there one sport that's putting the team on its back right now, John, when you think about the success and the growth that you've seen and expect and anticipate to continue to be the case at Dick's? Yeah, the Olympics were a great moment. That came and went. I think Dick's uh, continues to engage with athletes, male and female across a lot of different age groups, income demographics, uh, and, and they're winning on a lot of different sports. It's not just one sport. Uh, Dix has become synonymous with sport, the changing seasons of sport, and um, the younger consumer, I think, is really taken to Dix's store experience and allocations. That's, it's just so fascinating to me that you keep saying store experience and I keep thinking that I have never once walked into a store. Like, I just don't do that anymore. Uh, John, what is the advice that Dix should be giving to other retailers in the space that are tr still struggling with foot traffic? Now, Dix has invested heavily in their store store base. They're spending $800 million a year this year on CapEx. It's, a much, it's almost double what they were spending several years ago. Oh, now they're using a lot of that to build out their new stores, their next gen stores, what they're going to call field house stores and their stores, their house of sports stores, their largest expression of sport. And um, that's driving better engagement with consumers. The vendors want in on square footage in those stores and the landlords want dicks in their top locations. So um, store experience matters, omnichannel execution matters. And uh Dix is winning in those regards. A Dix field house. My goodness, I, could, I can't even imagine that. I can't wait to see as well how that plays out for the company. It's really easy to just go spend hours in Golf Galaxy, I suppose, uh, especially as you're trying to figure out what's right for you. But ultimately, we'll see how this all fares for Dix. John Kernan, thanks so much for taking the time thanks here with us this morning. Certainly. TD Cowan, Managing Director for Retail and Consumer Brands. We'll talk to you later. Yeah, shout out man. to D that's also in the building and shout out to the lovely Natasha Vince and the mom mother is also in the building and also her son. Shout out to you. Best to be upon you. Go ahead, um, George. Yeah, it seems like this for the good. They they know what they're doing in the company and they really do the great things and they're really moving the needle with parts of their company. And if you look at a, their stock, let me pull it up. 
They're at uh, $208 per share. Uh, looking back a year, be year prior, there was, uh, let me go, let me go. Looking at a year prior, a year prior, there was um, their share. There was at one hundred and forty-six dollars. I'm sorry, one hundred and um, yeah, one hundred and forty-six dollars per share. So compared to a year ago from now, they're um, they're they're up forty-one percent, and they made it and it, uh, it, it made about sixty-one dollars from the year prior today. So wherever uh, the sporting goods is doing, they do really, really good, really, really good. Um, go ahead, Akeem, man. What's your take on this sporting good? You know how shine, shine, shine. Shy. With the stock as well. And I know shout out to Ryan. That's also in the building. What's going on, big dog? What's going on, Ryan? So perfect that you say that. <clears throat> and I want to just highlight a couple things. When they said sports, Dix doesn't only highlight sports, they also highlight other things of leisure. Um, sporting, boating, um, they sell bass boats, they sell guns there. So Correct. they, you know what I mean? So they have a wide variety. They also sell clothing. They sell the um, hats and stuff like that and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Another one of their competitors, Bass Pro Shops, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, as far as in the space of like um, goods and stuff, I might be wrong. But also thing, people got to understand the um, America spending is easy to be able to attract we spend more money on leisure than a lot of other people. You could see that through the pandemic. And when we had got the um, pandemic checks, a lot of it, we spun it on leisure. We spun it on things, new boat items, fishing rods, all this other thing. So it doesn't, it makes sense that Dick Sporting Goods too. But plus they had a couple alley utes. The, the Olympics was one of them being one of the sponsors there and them able to sponsor a couple athletes and stuff like that. And they, one thing I do give them credit is they've been able to be a brick and mortar store to keep foot traffic in when a lot of places are having trouble. Macy's doesn't even have the type of foot traffic that Dick Sporting Goods is. You know I mean? This is a new type of clientele. It's a young type of clientele. I want people to also, and an older type of clientele. You know what I mean? I've been in Dick Sporting Goods myself. You always find an older man in there buying fishing rods, guns, and all sorts of things. So there's a number of things in there. Same here. Uh, I um, Of course, this is not financial advice. You do your own financial research. And I also speak with a financial advisor when it comes to, when it comes to the aspect of investing in Dick's Sporting Goods. I'm not going to lie, Hakeem. One of my first guns, I got it from Dick Sporting Goods. My first, my first purchase of my gun. I went to dig on um, scoring good. There was a, uh, there was an um, older gentleman and who helped me out to pick the right guns that fit for me and also fit my hands. So they got not only that, they also have great professional when it comes to the aspect when it comes to guns. So like the pretty much, it's pretty much what the gentleman stated in, in the interview when he was talking on, on Yahoo Finance. The, the same exact thing. They they merchandise they merchandise very well. They mm -hmm. know how to interact with customers, and they know what do the, the what the uh the consumer is looking for, especially right now when we in football season and sports season. That is, we got basketball, football, soccer, baseball, all these sporting events that's going on right now. They have the merchandise, so people are going in there, spending their money, and they know exactly what they're looking for. Instead of going to a Macy's or Ross or uh, another a sporting show, but Dick Sporting Goods pretty much pretty much got whatever you need. Whatever the consumer is looking for. So, Hakeem, you did a major breakdown when it came to the aspect of leverage. What do they have in their stores? And I think people, a lot of people that are in the sporting industry, to look up to uh, Dick's Sporting Goods and see, okay, where can I go and build up that cons that consumer fan base so I can keep my store generating the money that Dick's Sporting Goods is doing. Pretty soon, I won't be surprised Walmart start doing the same thing pretty soon, like Dick's Sporting Goods, when it comes to the aspect of selling. Uh, a lot of sports, a lot of sports wear. Walmart have a little bit, but it's not like Dick Sporting Goods. They, Dick Sporting Goods is hands down to me has all, pretty much anything you need. Go ahead, Jordan. Yeah, and the thing is about this: if you, when it comes to like sports apparel, like basketball, football, any all, all the sports apparel they sell, they really don't have any competitors like that. The last predicate that was out there, but they're not, but they out, they went out of business was Sports Authority. But other than that, they have no. They have really don't have no. You know, competitors like that. Uh, when it comes to like equipment, when it comes to like you know kids, high school kids, elementary kids, 
when they're playing baseball, football, basketball, soccer, swimming, you know, the first thing they'll go to is Sports Authority. I know Amazon there, but if you want to go see, if you want to check a variety of stuff, go look at you yourself and go to shopping malls or that type of stuff. Sports Authority is the number one place to go and everything. Also, you got high school kids, elementary school kids, they rock a lot of Nike, you know, um, um, Reeboks, all that type of things. And you see the kids, they like to wear, you know, sporty stuff. They go to the store and they buy the stuff as well. So uh, shout out to the CEO. They, they know they know their market. They know how, you know, how to get their customers in and out with customer service. Uh, when it comes to their online stuff, they know what to um, do. Like when it comes to free delivery, all that type of thing. So yeah, shout out to Dick Sporting Goods, man. They, they, they're, they're doing what they're supposed to do and everything. So like I said, if you got any kids that want to try, you know, new sports and everything, you need any, any type of sports equipment, Dick Sporting Goods is the number place to go. You know, if you want to go to Amazon, Dick Sporting Goods is the number place to go. And that's why I see the stock is up. And that's why I see a lot of a lot of good um, traffic going to the store and everything. So shout out to Dick Sporting Goods. Now, yeah, shout out to the baby chaos over there having a good old time on this lovely Friday evening. And now that guys, make sure keep it in mind, there's not a financial advisor. Make sure you say with a financial advisor or someone that has that understand the aspect when it comes to investing. Because I know some people are looking at the exploring good as a good investment. Make sure you sit down with someone before you make that rational decision. And to me, if you ask me on my personal bit, what 